What is happening everyone? It's your boy Mansoor aka Manny and welcome back to episode 21 of Manny's Food Channel. And for today's episode I'm going to be making a very simple dill basmati rice along with a tomato based braised lamb shank. Now with this recipe it does take a couple hours to make but it is one of those kind of dishes where the lower and the slower you cook it the more delicious and the more intensified flavor it will have. So without further ado let's get to it. Now because we're going to be braising this at a very low temperature and for a long specific amount of time, it's going to break down any of the veg and the meat that we're cooking. So typically when it comes to the veg, I don't like to cut it too thin. So just roughly chop it into nice thick slices, probably be around a quarter inch thick. So next up what I'm going to do is I'm going to thinly slice some leeks. Now with the leeks, I typically like to have uh, to use most of the white part and I cut off the top of the extremely green part of the leeks because it's a little bit bitter. But if you want to make stalks, then you can certainly use that top part of the leeks. But for this purpose, I'm only going to use the bottom half of the leeks. Make sure you wash it very well to remove any of the dirt or sand that's within the leaves so that way it doesn't go into the dish and slice them extremely thin. So next up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grate some carrots. I'm going to use the biggest part of my grater here, or my box grater. Now ideally, I would use baby carrots and slice them in half and put it in the dish, but just to make it easier and show you guys a different way of making this dish, I'm just going to grate the carrots. Okay, so now that we have everything prepped ready to go, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a large pot on medium to high heat because what we're going to do is we're going to sear the lamb. Now a couple of nicks and tricks uh, at the very beginning of when you're braising a dish. First thing is when it comes to the meat, make sure that the meat is dry before we fry it off and generously season the top with salt and pepper. Second, we're going to pour just enough oil to cover the bottom of the pan. And we're going to make sure that the oil is extremely hot first before we brown the meat. And the reason why we're doing that is just to lock in any of the flavors and give, in, give a bit of caramelization on the meat. So now what we're going to do is we're going to toss this in and caramelize and brown each side of the lamb shank for a couple minutes and then turn it over and do the other side. Now whenever it comes to searing off your meat, you never want to constantly move your meat around because at the end of the day you want to fry off and caramelize the meat rather than boil the meat. And the other thing too is you don't want to crowd up the pan too much with too much meat. If you feel that you have to sear off your meat in different batches, definitely do that. So now I'm just going to give this a quick turnover, see how it's doing. And this is the kind of color you're looking for, a very nice golden brown on each side. And then we're going to stir off the other side, take it off, and we'll start sauteing our veg. So now that the meat's been caramelizing really nicely, I'm going to take it out of the pot here. And then I'll set this aside until we need to put it back into the pot. But we're going to use the same oil, all the same seasoning and everything that's at the bottom of the pan because all the flavor's there. And I'm gonna turn the heat down to around half of the original heat that it's on. Because now what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to sweat off the, uh, the vegetables. But right now the heat's a little bit high, I'm just gonna wait for around two minutes and then I'm gonna start by sauteing the onions. So when it comes to searing off something at a really high heat, typically we use canola oil because canola oil can retain really high heat without uh, ever burning the oil and then on top of that if you decide that you want to add in any of the extra extra different kind of fats you can add it in there without it burning so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add this butter to the canola oil and just quickly melt this off and you'll notice it starts to foam up but you'll never you'll notice that it will never hit a point where it's gonna burn unless you have a really really high temperature or well, my temperature is not really high right now 
So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by sweating off my onions. I don't want to add too much color on it. I just want to sweat it off until it becomes really translucent. And I'm not going to stir it around very often. I'm going to stir it maybe once every three to four minutes. So just break off the onions and sweat it off for a couple minutes. So these onions have been sweating off for around five to six minutes and I've cooked it just enough so it starts to pull out the sweetness in the onions. Next what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw in the leeks followed by garlic cloves. Now the garlic cloves, I'm not going to crush them nor am I going to chop them at all and the reason why is because I like to have them whole and they taste really delicious once it's been braised for a couple hours. And typically they hold their shape really nicely so you can definitely serve, serve it as a, as a garnish in a way. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave it like this and let it cook off for another 5-6 to six minutes, stirring it once every 3-4 to four minutes just to sweat off and infuse some of those flavors in there. And then we're going to add in the carrots. So next up what I'm going to do is I'm gonna sweat off the carrots. I'm only gonna sweat this off for around two to three minutes just to, until I start to extract some of that sweetness from the carrots. So the thing I really love about braised dishes is you can't really speed up the process. That level of depth and flavor that you get usually with braised dishes, you can't really cheat in a sense. And on top of that, when you leave it in the fridge to let it sit for another day, it tastes even better. And on top of that, there's not a lot of effort and you don't have to take a lot of time to prepare these kind of dishes. But now this has been sweating off for a couple minutes, I'm just going to toss in some tomato paste and cook that off for a little bit. And while this just sweats off in the middle here, I'm going to zest one lemon. I'm going to fold this in. I'm going to add just a touch of lemon juice. And I'm going to season this mix very slightly. Now when it comes to braising or stewing, typically you don't want to season too too much at the very beginning because the liquid's going to reduce over time. And when it hits that reduction point, where it's almost ready, sometimes it's too over seasoned and it tastes too salty or it's just got too much uh, black pepper or whatnot. So I'm only going to season just this mix here. When I add in the beef stock, I'm not going to season it until close to the very end where I feel I've reduced the stock enough. So now I'm just going to let this cook off for another five minutes or so. And then we'll add in the stock and we'll add back the lamb shank. So before I add a lid on it, I'm going to add just a touch of turmeric powder. Just give this a quick little mix. Now there's a very slight difference between stewing and braising. And mainly their difference is the amount of liquid that you put in stewing and in braised dishes. With stewing, typically you cover up your whole pot and everything is covered full of liquid. Whereas with braising, usually it's about the halfway point or just enough that you still see the meat over top of the liquid. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in the lamb shanks and I'm gonna toss in just enough stock to cover around three quarter mark of the lamb shank. And I'm just using store-bought beef broth if you made your own beef broth, it tastes a lot better. But make sure when you're adding or you're buying beef broth that it doesn't have any seasoning in it. So that way it doesn't contribute to possible saltiness after you reduce it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this up to a very quick boil. Then I'm going to drop it down to a very, very light simmer and simmer this down for probably around two hours. I'm going to cover it with a lid. And I'll check back within two hours to see whether or not it's cooked and it's starting to break apart from the bone. If it's not, we'll continue to cook it. But in the meantime, we'll move on to working on the dill rice. So every culture has their own variation on how to make basmati rice. 
but I'm going to show you the Persian or Iranian way. So what I have here is a pot of boiling water, about five to six times more the amount of water as I do rice because the basmati rice is going to expand. I'm going to make the water ocean salty, uh, which means it's going to be extremely salty, but because we're going to wash it later and we're going to strain it, most of that salt is going to come off the rice anyways. So I'm going to give this a quick stir. You want to make sure that the water is at a rolling boil before you add it in. And the basmati rice, I washed it for about five to six times in cold water to make sure that I remove any of the impurities or any of the dust or dirt in the basmati rice. And now I'm just gonna dump it in. And then I'm gonna give this a quick stir and cook it for around six to eight minutes, depending, just until it's al dente. And then we're gonna strain it off. So it's gonna cook for around 80% of the time and then the other 20% we're gonna steam the basmati rice. So now I'm just gonna leave this around six to eight minutes. I'm gonna stir it occasionally to make sure it doesn't stick to the bottom of the pot. And then after that, we're gonna strain it. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna strain off this rice. And then we're gonna run it under cold water. And we're just doing this to cool down the cooking process. Now the way to tell whether or not the rice is cooked is get a grain of rice. And what we're trying to do is we still want it to have a little bit of a bite in the rice. So it's only cooked to around 80%. And then we're going to steam the other 20. But right now we're just going to cool down the rice with cold water. So after straining off the rice, we're going to add in a lot of dill. Now I personally like to use dry dill because it has a more intensified flavor. Be very generous with the dill and make sure you evenly distribute it amongst all the grains of the rice. And you're going to put just enough dill until all grains of rice are coated with, with dill. Now typically with this kind of recipe, it's very traditional to add lima beans. But unfortunately I couldn't find fresh ones and I don't like canned. So I just omitted that step. But if you like to add lima beans to this rice, you certainly could. So next what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of canola oil at the bottom of the pot. Make sure the pot is completely cool before you reuse the same pot. You don't have to wash out the same pot, just make sure you wipe it down. Now you take a brush, evenly distribute the oil at the bottom of the pot. And next what you're going to do is you're going to grab the rice and use your hands for this part. It's a lot easier than it is using a spoon or something like that. We're going to layer it kind of like a mountain. There's going to be a lot of rice at the bottom and as you go higher up, it's going to be in the shape of a cone. Next up, what you're going to do is you're just going to grab the end part of your wooden spoon and just poke a lot of holes around the rice. And the reason why we're doing this is because we want to let some of that evaporation out as it's cooking. Otherwise, that evaporation could make the rice soggy and won't have that nice look and texture that we're looking for. And finally, what we're going to do is we're going to add just enough water around it to cover at least one to two grains of the rice and the reason why we're doing this is just so it has some water to steam the rice you don't want to add too much otherwise once again it could get soggy so finally what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add a clean towel on top of the pot and then put the lid on it and the reason why we do this is because we don't want the water to go back into the rice we want that evaporation to be absorbed by the towel so that way each grain doesn't get stuck together and it has the nice look and texture that we're looking for. And then finally, I'm just gonna turn it on medium to low heat and let it cook off for about 20 minutes to half an hour or until it's completely ready. So the rice has been cooking for around 25 minutes. I'm just gonna open it up and see how it is. And then you'll know when it's ready when the grains are soft, but they're not sticking together. That's why we'll put the towel on top so it absorbs some of that evaporation. So now that the rice is ready, I'm going to turn off the heat and I'm just going to throw in a couple knobs of butter here just to add a little bit of richness to the rice and use a fork and lightly fluff the rice and evenly distribute the butter and then we'll cover it back up and then we'll go back to seeing how the braised lamb shanks are.
All right, so it's been about two hours or so. Look at how delicious that looks. Nicely braised, low heat, nicely infused flavor, richness in the sauce. Now, right before we serve it, this would be the time to add in any salt and pepper that you need to to season up the sauce. Otherwise, we can start plating. So what I really like about this dish is because the lamb has been braised, it's had a long amount of time to be able to develop the flavor profiles that I'm really looking for. It's one of those dishes where you can't really cheat the flavor, you just have to let it cook on low heat for a long specific amount of time to be able to develop this kind of flavor. Now some other garnishes that I quickly added around it are some charred tomatoes, as well as something that we call sedesh. Uh, it's pretty much just a sour cherry, or a version of a sour cherry, just to help cut down the richness of the dish. But See how it is? As always, freaking delicious. Definitely have a go and let me know how it is. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And I look forward to seeing everybody next time.